a lot of exciting things going on at Pratt right now, so let me get right into it. So this is kind of what sets uh, Pratt aside from our other engine competitors. I mean, we really span the breadth of technology and products with the, the five business segments that we have, uh, making engines that go anywhere from zero miles per hour with our stationary power units to engines that can go up to Mach 6 with our new scramjet engine on the X-51 and anywhere from a thousand pounds of thrust from some of our small business jet engines to a million pounds of thrust with some of our rocket engine and our rocket uh, technology. So no other engine company in the world can match the, really the breadth of technology and the capability that we have and we try to leverage this back and forth across Pratt to really uh, maximize the power of Pratt. These are the, the five business segments here that I just talked about on the slides. You can see how they uh, Lay out proportionally, last year we generated close to $13 billion in revenue, and that number will be a little bit higher this year. The five business segments, with our largest one being our large commercial engine business and the military engine business, prep when you can, the small engine business, and there are two smaller segments, PW Rocketine and uh, PW Power Systems. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the nice split we have between OEM and aftermarket, and obviously we like the balance that that gives our portfolio. But enough about the numbers, let's talk about what's really exciting in the business right now. And over the last 12 months or so, we've had a number of really transformational events that position Pratt Whitney for very strong growth going forward, starting certainly with the, the big announcement late last year of Airbus launching their re-engineering program, the A320neo program, and then subsequent to that, Pratt Whitney winning the first three launch orders uh, for the A320neo program, initially from ILFC then from Indico and Lufthansa, and uh, the fact that we won 100% of the launch orders uh, enabled Airbus to position us as the first engine certified on the A320 NEO program. And so when that airplane enters service in late in 2015, we'll be the engine on that first airplane delivery. We expect that uh, maybe the, our, we'll be at least a year, maybe more, ahead of our competitor in terms of getting the engine certified and entering the service. So. Very important milestones for us. We also continue to bring forward the development of the PW800 engine. This is our, our uh, engine that's based on the same core we've developed in the next generation product family for the MRJ and the C-Series application. We're taking that same great, that same advanced technology core and applying it to the large business seg segment with the PW800. So we're bringing that forward. That first engine will be in test uh, early next year and we continue to be excited about the prospects that that, has, that engine has and some potentially very large business gen applications. I'll talk more about that. I'll talk more about F-35, all F-135 program, but we continue to execute flawlessly there. And obviously, we're pretty excited about the news that um, the Department of Defense has finally gotten what they wanted and that the funding for the alternate engine, the extra engine, has now been eliminated from Congress. So going forward, we would hope to be the sole source engine for the Joint Strike Fighter program. KC-135, uh, the tanker program, obviously that battle's going on for 10 years now, and uh, earlier this year, uh, following a Pratt with me, we're the beneficiary of that contract award. That'll be another growth engine for Pratt going forward. And then other future programs. We had first flight earlier this year on the Northrop Grumman platform, the X-47 uh, unmanned vehicle with our Pratt with me engine. And we continue to work on advanced programs in our military engine business for strategic bombers from unmanned vehicles and others. And even in our power systems business, we've launched the development of an industrial gas turbine to replace our venerable FT-8. So no matter where you look across the business, we're doing things to transform the business and position Pratt Whitney for very strong growth. I talked about the, you know, the success we've had with some of the early orders on the gear turbofans. Coming into the air show, we already had orders on the books for more than 1,200 gear turbofans. If you just look at the applications we have, for the MRJ, the C-Series, and the A320neo program, again, between firm and option orders, we've got more than 1,200 engine orders coming into the show, and we expect that number to grow by hundreds here at the show this week. And that doesn't include the orders that we have for the fourth application we're developing on the Russian, the Yakut MC-21 program. And you can see on the right-hand margin there some of the marquee operators and leasing companies that have signed up to select the gear turbofan. So we're pretty excited about the early success We've had uh, the nice growing backlog that we've got. I talked about the NEO orders, and uh, we continue to make progress with the MRG ba MRJ backlog as well. They recently announced an order from ANA for another 10 engines, and then Bombardier has recently made some announcements with um, uh, another selection by 
Bretton's or Malmo Airline and a number of undisclosed lawyers to continue to add to their backlog for C-Series aircraft. So, great backlog, great progress on building the order book for the next generation product family, the Gear Turbo Fan. And uh, we continue to bring the development pro program forward and uh, continue to execute flawlessly on developing engines. And uh, in the late breaking news, in fact, just hours ago, we actually had the first flight uh, of the C-Series engine on our Pratt Whitney 747 flying test bed. Took to the air over the skies of Montreal uh, late yesterday, East Coast time. Uh, you'll notice some of us are wearing a, a button today to celebrate the first flight of the C-Series engine. And why don't we watch a video of that? What you are watching right now may be history in the making as a new generation of green engines become reality. Engine maker Pratt & Whitney conducted a test flight of a new engine the company says will mean bluer skies and quieter airports. Following days of intense preparations, the Pure Power PW1524G made its maiden voyage from the company's new test facility in Mirabel, Canada. The move here is very exciting. I, I can feel it in the air. It's just been pretty incredible, actually. Uh, the team here is really great, and uh, we've been having a lot of fun. The engine is taking to the skies to power the Bombardier C-Series commercial aircraft. Pratt & Whitney will test a total of eight engines out of the Mirabel facility over the next 18 months with the goal of certification in 2012. From the whole flight operation perspective, we'll have four other engines that will be flown and we're looking at about 150 flight hours. The engine features an advanced gear system and advanced core that promises to deliver improvements in fuel efficiency, emissions, and noise. Industry analysts describe today's flight as an evolution in engine technology. The Pure Power family of green engines just may be the power plant of choice for the next generation of passenger aircraft. So there you have it, first flight of the, the next generation product family engine, the C-Series engine. Uh, the engine performed flawlessly, it was close to a two hour flight, and with the engine providing propulsion and lift, not just going along for the ride and the, under the wing there, but really providing a lift and a propulsion for that 747. Great performance, we continue to be excited about the performance of the development program uh, with the first flight yesterday. but. This is actually just already the third engine that we have in test. Uh, it was the second C-Series engine, third engine in total. So now we've got two series, two C-Series engines in test and uh, one MRJ engine test as well. The, the first C-Series engine, we accumulated about 200 hours on our test stand uh, in Florida, went north to our icing facility. You can see that there in uh, Manitoba and Canada for another 40 hours of icing testing and now we're carrying that engine down to examine it to make sure that we understand how it's performing. And again, the first MRJ engine is already on the test stands in Florida, and we've got about 60 hours on that already. And by the end of this year, we'll have 14 engines in test between the two development programs with the NEO program right on its heels. Uh, we can continue to build the confidence with every, every additional hour of test time we put on this new core, new engine. You can see how we continue to accumulate test time here, this includes the, the flight test program we did on our demo engine, on the A340 program, and that engine is right back either right there, we've got 400 hours on that, that engine in back of you there that's here on the test stand, here on the stand today. By the end of this year, we'll have about 2,100 hours on, on the engines, on the MRJ and the C-Series engine between the core and the engine testing, and that number will grow to more than a million hours by the time the A320neo program enters service. Late in 2015, we'll have over a million hours on this engine between the, the testing that we've done, ground testing, and also uh, flight operational hours for the MRJ C-Series program, which will already be entry to service late in 2013, early 2014. So, good progress there, and again, with every hour, we, we, we continue to build confidence in the performance of this engine, and we know it's going to have a flawless entry to service. You've heard this, uh, this story before. I mean, this engine provides extraordinary benefits to the marketplace, great value to the operators. When you look at the fuel burn benefit that it's going to deliver, the acoustic benefits, the, the maintenance costs, and I'll talk more about the maintenance cost advantages. Emissions, uh, no matter where you look, I mean, this, this engine delivers extraordinary benefits. So we're excited about it. 
and all the data that we're getting off the engine and the test program that we're running today continues to validate these numbers. So these were, this is what we've told the marketplace and this is what we're confident we're going to deliver when that engine goes into service. Now, GE's great company, great technology, um, CFM56 is a great engine, but we believe simply we have a better engine that's much further ahead in development. And you can see some of the reasons why here on this slide. If you take a look at the, the gear turbofan architecture on the left hand side, compare it to what we believe the, the lead back architecture is, we have six fewer rotating stages in the engine, much simpler design, uh, roughly 60% fewer airfoils, and lower operating temperatures between the hot, hot section of the, of the engine. All that combines to give our engine a 20% maintenance cost advantage, we believe, uh, in performance and operation. So uh, the architecture of this en engine, we think, just offers superior advantages. Certainly, again, uh, our competitors have great technology, but we've also infused that other technology improvement. So we've put, we talk a lot about the gear, but in every one of the engine modules, from the fan back to the low turbine, we've got new technology across the engine, which helps to provide that 16% advantage that we keep talking about. And we're not done. You know, we're at 16% better than engines today. But we continue to advance that about a percent to a percent and a half a year with the technology roadmap that we've got laid out in front of us. So that 16% becomes roughly 25% by the time we get to the middle part of the next decade with, again, the technology that we're infusing into every one of the engine modules from the fan back to the low turbine, including in the gear system, as we continue to learn more about that and continue to improve and refine that engine architecture. We're also getting growth and lift out of our, our large commercial business, MRO, our two newest shops in uh, Shanghai, China, and uh, in Istanbul, Turkey, which are both joint ventures with uh, airlines in those regions, continue to give us lift along with our own Pratt Whitney engines and our partnership engines, the V2500 and the GP7000. And here in these two shops in Shanghai and Istanbul, we're actually doing overall repair on CFM engines, and by the time we get to the end of, the end of this year, we'll have overall more than 200 engines in these two shops. Switching to the military business again, great progress here on our most exciting new program, the military segment, Joint Strike Fighter. Uh, we're, we're, uh, the development program is well behind us. We completed development of both the C-12 and Stovall engines last year. We're now ramping up production deliveries. As you know, the aircraft continues in, in the flight test program. And, Lockheed's doing a great job of staying ahead of the flight test program this year. They're well ahead of the, the plan, the number of hours and test point plan that they committed to the DOD and the JPO uh, last year for the flight test. And the engine readiness is running at about 99%, enabling them to continue to move for, forward very rapidly in their flight test program. So the engine's performing flawlessly. We're delivering production engines. We've now delivered more than 20 production engines and continue to ramp up with production deliveries there. And cost continues to come down uh, for this engine. We committed a cost reduction plan to the customer and to the DOD two years ago, and we're right on that cost reduction plan. The, the last um, lot contract that we signed with the Department of Defense, we gave them a 16% price reduction. We're getting ready for our next lot negotiation, and they'll get another double-digit price improvement in that engine price as well. So we continue to be very excited about our progress there. As I mentioned, uh, the merits of the argument for having a single engine of the Joint Strike Fighter finally prevailed. The DOD has gotten what, what they wanted, and that's to eliminate funding for the second engine, and we hope to maintain that position going forward. We've also got some other things in the military business that are kind of on the horizon, exciting. The tanker program I talked about, again, this was a 10-year battle, and uh, we were the, the happy recipient of that contract award earlier this year, obviously with our, our partner, Boeing. Uh, these deliveries will start to ramp up mid part of the decade and we'll continue to ramp this program up as we head toward 2020. And others, some more futuristic programs. I talked about the first flight we had earlier this year, the Northrop Grumman X-47. Uh, we've also got some interesting programs and technologies we're working on on strategic bombers and other, unman other un uh, unmanned vehicles that could be interested in the future as well. Switching to Pratt Whitney Canna, our tremendous Small engine business here, uh, serving both business jets, regional turboprops, helicopters, and utility aircrafts. Tremendous growth story, you've heard this before, they went from about 1,000 engines to 2003, quadrupled their output to about 4,000 engines in 2008. 
were hit hard by the economic crisis in 09 and 010 with engine deliveries coming down about 31%. But the good news is we think we're through the trough. This, engine, this business will be a growth engine again for Pratt Whitney going forward, given by both recovery in the markets they serve as well as a continued large number of new product introductions on helicopters, business jets, and other applications, some of which you can see on the slide here over the right hand side. Also exciting in Pratt & Canada are some of the new products that they're bringing forward to the market. I talked already about the, the PW800. This leverages the same core and the same next generation technology we're applying for a large commercial engine business. This is the same core as the MRJ and the C-Series. We're pretty confident that we're going to capture opportunities in the large business jet segment, uh, which is a segment that historically Pratt & Canada has not been strong in. We have about 12% of that market today. But quite honestly, we think we have a shot to grow that to be number one in the market by the end of the decade. And we think that this great new engine will help us do that. On the right hand side, we're also working on a next generation regional turboprop engine. You know that we are we have a strong position in that market today with the PW100 and 150 engines uh, that we have on the ATR and the Dash 8 aircraft. This is the next generation. We'll have a, a compressor demo this year, a core demo next year, and to bring the engine forward uh, for Pratt & Canada marketplace following that. Rocket Eye, PW Rocket Eye, a little bit of uncertainty in this business segment because of the, the continued uncertainty with the U.S. space program and what NASA's future is, but it seems to be starting to clarify itself. They've now declared that uh, the Orion uh, capsule will be the, uh, the platform they'll use for getting astronauts back into space going forward. They're clearly going to need the heavy lift to get that up there. And Rocketdyne is the, the world's premier leader in liquid rocket propulsion. is probably best positioned to help them do that. We continue to bring forward the development of the new J2X engine. We'll actually have the first test firing uh, later this month, we believe. Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're, uh, we've got to deal with the fact that the shuttle program's engine, we have the main engine, engines of the shuttle program. But we think we've got other things that we'll start to replace in the future. We've got growth opportunities in missile defense. We'll continue to be the, the workhorse of the DOD launch platforms on Atlas and Delta. We've got some very interesting technology in hypersonics. I talked about the, the first flight of the X-51, where our new scramjet engine took that platform up to speeds close to in excess of Mach 5. Uh, no other engine company in the world can do that. And we've also got some very interesting technology here in renewable energy with potential projects in solar and coal gasification that we're working on today. And power systems. Our industrial gas turbine business, we've got more than 2,000 industrial gas turbines installed around the world. This business has delivered five successive years of record earnings growth at Pratt. We're now working on our next generation industrial gas turbine, what we call the FT4000, to replace the venerable FT8. And we've got growth opportunities in the, the aftermarket or the spare parts that we do not only for our engines, but for our competitors' engines here as well. And an interesting acquisition two years ago in 2009 of a company in Europe that does renewable energy systems that generates electricity from various forms of heat, including industrial waste heat, uh, solar, thermal, biomass, and others, and we've got growth opportunities from that as well. So no matter where you look in this business, there's a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, you may have heard me state before that, you know, as we project all this out going forward, it kind of look at some of the, the declines in our legacy business and look at the ramp up and all these new programs I talked about. Pratt Whitney, we expect to double by the end of this decade. The revenues are expected to double. If you just simply do the math of the, the platforms there we're on and, and the number of engines and products that will deliver and the growth and the aftermarket that will come with it, again, this business doubles. So these are exciting times at Pratt. You're kind of surrounded by some of the excitement in this room here today, both in the products in this room and some of the pictures on the wall. Another historic milestone today with the first flight of the C-Series engine. Um, so these are exciting times at Pratt Whitney. We're glad you could be here with us this morning. Uh, we've still got plenty of time. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, we've got the entire leadership team here in the front row to help me out as well.